Hi guys, in this video, I'm going to talk about expectation maximization algorithm. And I'm going to give an example uh, using binomial mixture model. So what is the EM algorithm? Well, suppose we observe some X, we have some data, but we assume that there is some latent variable Z that we can't observe directly and that it affects the distribution of X. And of course, we also assume some parameterized distribution for x. So x depends on some parameters, and we would like to um, know these parameters. And we would like to know them by maximize the likelihood of our data, or the log likelihood. So in this case, um, in the EM framework, we would say that x is incomplete. It doesn't have all the data. Instead, if we could look at both x and the latent variable that we can see, z, then we would have the complete data set. And often uh, the most common example that is given is of Gaussian mixture models. So suppose that is some categorical. Yeah, suppose that uh, in the case that there's only two distributions. Yeah, so suppose Z uh, is Bernoulli. Okay, so it's Bernoulli okay, with some um, P. Okay, and when you get zero, you are taking an X that is distributing mu zero and sigma square. Okay, and when you get one, you get, you draw X from a distribution that is from mu one and sigma square. So in the 1D case example, you would have, let's say, you would have two Gaussian, so something like this, and say something like this, yeah, and, Sometimes you get data from this Gaussian, and sometimes you get data from this Gaussian. But all you see is the data. You don't know from which Gaussian it comes from. So all you see is some unobserved quantity. So you get this x, and then this x, and then this x, and this x, and then here, and here, and here, and here. OK, and if you do it enough, you would kind of see that there's a lot here, a lot here, quite a lot here, because this is their intersection, but not so many here and not so many here. You assume it's a mixture of Gaussians, but you don't know the parameters. You would want to know the parameters. Yeah, and we could also do that instead of Bernoulli, it's a categorical, let's say a three clusters. So you have some pi one, pi two, and pi three, where the sum of pi one to pi three is one. And now we could have a three uh, distribution. We can have mu1, mu2, and mu3. Okay, so we could have another distribution. We could have maybe a third Gaussian here. And again, we don't observe the actual Gaussians. We don't know from which distribution it comes from. All we see is the data. So we see uh, a lot of here also. Okay, and of course, instead of it being a 1D dimension, it can be a 2D dimension or any dimension. Yeah, so in the 2D dimension, and suppose now I only draw the clusters. So it could be that you have one Gaussian that is like this. Yeah, and this is the contour plots of Gaussians. Another Gaussian, which is like this. And another Gaussian, which is like this. And all you see is the data. So you have a lot of data points here, a lot of data points here, and a lot of data points here. But all you see is the data. You don't know uh, from which cluster each data come from. And so EM is also used for clustering, because as you can see, it kind of what the EM algorithm will give you eventually, it will give you the different clusters and the uh, parameters. Uh, of each Gaussian. Okay, so let's go about how to actually do the EM. So of course, if we could compute the incomplete likelihood directly, there wouldn't be any problem. So we want to maximize the likelihood of our data and we can use the, the law of total probability to expand this to also uh, incorporate the latent variables and then we can break them uh, using condition distribution to X given Z times uh, the probability of Z. What the EM does, uh, EM is used when we cannot uh, compute this directly or um, maximize the data directly. So the idea is to maximize 
the complete likelihood. So the um, likelihood of the complete data set of both the X and the Z and using some iterative approach. So we start with some value of theta, then we say, okay, this expression, yeah, the log likelihood uh, has some values for Z and we don't know them. So let's uh, compute an estimated value of Z and the estimate will be the expected value of Z given our data and the current value of theta. And then once we have those values of Z, we plug them in as if we know them, and then we maximize this quantity with regards to theta. So then we say, okay, now suppose we don't know theta and we just maximize this quantity again, just with regards to theta, but now the Z's are known. Now we have some values of Z's and these values doesn't have to correspond to any real value of Z. So for example, Z could be normally, let's say in the categorical uh, distribution, it will, the values is either one or zero, yeah? But once we go to the expectation of this, the expectation becomes a probability. So actually the value that you plug for Z could be a probability, even though that the true values of Z are of course either zero or one in the case here, yeah? When, when we didn't use, um, categorical, but a Bernoulli, which is a categorical of two. So if we summarize the algorithm, then you start with some random value of theta. The E step is computing this quantity over here. Yeah, it's computing the values of Z, um, given that X is known, your data is known, and some current value of the thetas of the parameters. And then in the M step, you treat this quantity, you look at this quantity again and you treat the E's as, you know, as if you know them, as if you already have their values and because you already calculated them as the expected values. And then you maximize this with regard to theta. And then you say, okay, suppose I don't know theta and then you differentiate or use some other numerical methods and you find the values of theta that maximize this. And then you go back and you do the E again and use the new values of theta to calculate new values for the z's or the expected values of the z's and then you go again and you maximize and so on and so on and you do this until the values of the parameters don't really change they are their changes below some threshold okay so note that this algorithm maximizes the complete likelihood but we want to maximize the incomplete likelihood right so why why do we maximize the complete likelihood when what we want to maximize is the incomplete likelihood um is that okay i mean can we do this so it turns out yeah it, it kind of it's kind of okay so suppose we have our current guess on theta which is theta at point t and we want to improve it meaning we want to find theta t plus one such that the likelihood at t plus one is greater than the likelihood at t. So let's look at their difference at the likelihood at theta t plus one minus the likelihood at theta t. Well, this is equal to this thing, the log likelihood, yeah? Minus the log likelihood. And we're looking here on the incomplete likelihood. So what we actually want to maximize. And now we can use the law of total probability to uh, introduce the latent variable Z uh, in the first expression, and then we can break it down using the conditional to the conditional times the probability of z. And now we're going to do a trick, and we're going to multiply this by one, basically. So we multiply this by f of z at uh, given x and theta t divided by f of z given x at theta t. Okay, so if we multiply by this and we divide by this, then we are multiplied by one, so this is equal. Okay, now notice it's this expression yeah, over here. And what is it really? Well, you could look at it as if it's the expectation of this quantity, yeah, this quantity over here, uh, with regards to the distribution, to this distribution. And another way to write this as will be as this thing over here. Okay, so we have an expectation of some quantity. Okay, now we can use Jensen inequality that says if you have a function of an expected value, then it's always greater or equal than the expected value of that function for a concave function, yeah? So this is for a concave function and log, in our case, we have the function log, so log is concave. And if it was a convex function, then this thing would just be the other way around, yeah? 
And why is it true for integrals? And why is it true for expectation? Well, you can kind of look at expectation as a sum, right? So expectation is kind of, it's an integral and it's a sum and Jensen inequality is usually given as a sum, right? So the traditional way that where that Jensen inequality is shown is that G uh, sum of X is um, less or equal to, to the sum of G of X for a convex G or exists for concave G. So we can use as an inequality, and then it would mean that we can move the log, the function inside the, the expected value. So now we have log of this quantity inside the expected value, and this is what we do. And now, since we have a log minus a log, well, this quantity doesn't depend on z at all. So this quantity, you could just expand it to be this quantity log f x given theta t times f z x theta t dt because this quantity will go outside of the integral and then the integral sums to one and once you do this you can put the log it had you have a log minus a log you can just put it in the denominator here okay so we have this quantity over here and we can call it for simplicity u okay and so what we got we got that so we got that the incomplete log likelihood at theta t plus one minus the incomplete log likelihood at theta t is always greater or equal to some quantity u, which depends on theta t plus one. And then it means that the log likelihood at t plus one is always greater or equal to the log likelihood plus u. And also know that if we set theta t plus one to be equal to the theta t, that if we set our new theta to be exactly the same as the old theta, then u becomes zero. And then the new log likelihood is equal to the old log likelihood. And why is it true? Is because, well, this expression over here, if we just put theta t, then we get the uh, numerator and denominator are the same. And then we get log of one, which is zero. And what we want, we want to maximize u uh, with regards to theta t plus one in order that our new log likelihood will be as greater as possible, right? Because our new log likelihood will always be greater than the sum of this plus u. So if we increase u, then also the new log likelihood will increase. Okay, but notice what is, notice that if we try to maximize u with regards to theta t plus one, then we could just ignore this, the denominator. It has nothing to do here with uh, theta t plus one. Okay, so we can break this down again and take this to be outside, and then the, it won't be uh, related to theta t plus one. And so the argmax of u is equal to the argmax of only the numerator. Okay, and then we can uh, reunite this to be the joint, which is what we're doing here. But then this is exactly uh, the expected value with regards to the distribution z given x and theta t of this quantity, of this joint, uh, log likelihood or the complete log likelihood. Okay, so it turns out that if we maximize this quantity, then we will also uh, improve the log likelihood in the next step. And so these are the properties of the EM algorithm. Each, uh, each iteration improves the incomplete log likelihood or leaves it unchanged. And this is kind of nice because we are actually optimizing the complete log likelihood, but still each iteration will improve the incomplete log likelihood, which is what we would want to uh, improve, but it can get stuck at a local maxima. So there is no guarantee to convergence of the, to the true parameters. It's an optimization uh, algorithm, so optimization can get stuck at local optima.